Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, today is going to be a very, very busy day. We got a million different pieces of news. So, of course, we'll talk about the Jamal Bowman incident. This uh, went viral uh, for understandable reasons, I guess, but it's also, in my opinion, kind of a silly story. We'll get to that. We'll also get to the government shutdown has been averted, and the conclusion of it, got to be honest with you, is probably the best possible conclusion for Democrats. Republicans screwed themselves over because of their infighting. Uh, that's kind of hilarious. So now we have uh, even more of a civil war on the right between the Gates faction and the Kevin McCarthy faction. We got Robert F. Kennedy Jr. teasing a big announcement. Uh, I'm pretty sure we know exactly what it is. There's been some reporting to that effect. And buckle up for that one. That story's interesting, and it's got a bunch of different uh, twists and turns that we can dive into. Then we have the Biden impeachment inquiry. That's been going on for a little bit now. And um, suffice to say, there are even some Fox News, ho News hosts who are not buying what the impeachment inquiry is selling. In fact, um, one of their hosts turned on Republicans over this hearing because he thinks they're doing such a piss poor job. So we'll talk about that. And then also we have Bill Maher turns on Joe Biden. That's kind of surprising. He's been a little bit of a, a ride or die Biden stan. Um, and then what else I got for you? Oh, we got uh, Ron DeSantis is now officially challenging Donald Trump to a one-on-one -on -one debate, and his rhetoric has become more aggressive recently. He, you know, it, it's the realization is setting in. I'm like a thousand points behind, and I don't have that much time, and so I got to go, go, go. And so now he's uh, more directly going for Trump's jugular in a way that he previously was not doing. So we'll talk about all that and much more. Everybody do me a big favor. Please click the subscribe button. We're still trying to grow our channel. Like I always tell you, desperately trying to stay ahead of my wife for bragging rights. I think, you know, it's 30%, 40% of you guys who watch this channel who don't subscribe. Hook a brother up with a subscription. It helps in the algorithm and it doesn't cost you anything at all. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it here. So Jamal Bowman is in a bit of hot water because he was caught on a security video camera pulling the fire alarm. Pulling the fire alarm, and then the argument that a bunch of people are making is like, oh, the reason he's doing this is because he wants to delay a vote that Congress was going to take. Okay, so now the reaction from the right, um, we'll get to whether or not that's actually true in a second, but also the reaction from the right is probably the most important part of this story. So first, let's go to Fox News here, and they're going to talk about the incident. Happened in the middle of it. The fire alarm went off on Capitol Hill. <laughs> How could it have happened? Well... Oh. We know now. We know. The there are pictures and videos. <laughs> the cover of the New York Post says, what in the blazes, what in blazes, Bronx Representative Jamal Bowman pulled the fire alarm as Democrats sought delay. So the Democrats were trying to delay what was going on on the House floor. And then Jamal, Jamal Bowman says it was all a mistake. He was trying to open the door and push, pull the big red button that says fire on it. And it's really unbelievable that someone with Jamal Bowman's background, a former principal, doesn't know what a fire alarm looks like. Um, but he's trying to lie. He says that any anybody saying that he did this to delay the vote, something we know that, uh, you know, Hakeem Jeffries was trying to do um, on the House floor at the very same time. Uh, that, you know, and we need to get to the bottom of how that happened. Were they coordinating? But he there is videotape evidence of him pulling the fire alarm and then saying it's BS. Yeah. Just to be clear, this is not the fire alarm in the main building. He was in a different building, and then after he did this, he ran out the door and rushed to go vote. So saying you're trying to delay the vote while running as fast as you can to get to the vote, mm, that doesn't seem like it adds up. More on that in a minute. To call him out for trying to delay the vote. The vote. Here's what he said. He says, today as I was rushing to make a vote, I came to a door that is usually open for, vote, for votes, but today wouldn't open. I'm embarrassed to admit that I activated the fire alarm, <laughs> mistakenly, thinking it would open the door. I want to be very clear. This was not me in any way trying to delay any vote. What a blatant lie. What, what's funny about this, he says, I was trying to open the door. It's like he mistaken a doorknob for, uh, for a fire alarm. I think we have a picture here of a tweet from Congressman Brian Mast. And it labels it very well for him. It says on the left side, door. <laughs> on the right side, the tweet says fire alarm. It's kind of redundant, though, because the fire alarm <laughs> says fire alarm. I yeah. worked in the Cannon House building, and as much trouble as I have getting around and being places on time, I never felt like I had to 
pull a fire alarm to get well, through the door. And look at that. That's a screenshot. So that means there's a video. There's, and that means yes. in the investigation, Release the video. even just in the screenshot, if you're trying to open the door, you're not turning your back on the door. No. You're probably using your left hand and kind of looking at it. He's, he's on his way somewhere else yeah. in that screenshot of a video. Of course it's a lie. And we'll find out how legitimate of an investigation the Republicans are willing to have. If they're willing to act, I mean, disrupting an official proceeding comes with a six-month uh, penalty. And many people are sitting in D.C. prisons right now from January 6th because they disrupted an official proceeding. Okay, now, by the way, Donald Trump Jr. came out and made the exact same argument. You have all these people who obstructed an official government proceeding who are sitting in prison now, all the January 6th that are so. If they don't throw the book at Jamal Bowman, it shows how biased our system is. This is an argument they're seriously making. As if there's not a substantive difference between people who were literally trying to orchestrate a coup and overturn the results of the election versus somebody in this situation, which I admit is very confusing. Now, by the way, when I first saw this story, my gut reaction was, I don't really buy that. That story doesn't add up. You know, really? You're going to go pull the fire alarm to think that it's going to open up the door? That doesn't really make much sense to me. But then the second thought was, but hold on. The delaying the vote thing doesn't add up. As soon as you learn, he was in a different building. This isn't the main building. And he was rushing to the main building. And he was sprinting to try to go cast a vote. So if you're trying to delay the vote, why would the thing you do right after that be to get to the vote as fast as possible? So honestly, when I looked at that, I said, neither story really adds up until you see this. Look at this sign. Emergency exit only. Push until alarm sounds, three seconds. Door will unlock in 30 seconds. Huh? And then you also get, by the way, there's another way to read it here. There's sort of like a, a an unusually large space in between the words push and until and alarm and sounds. And you could also read it like emergency exit only, push alarm until sounds. So you could read it, push until alarm sounds, or push alarm until sounds. Then it says three seconds, door will unlock in 30 seconds. So when I look at this sign, sorry, but I completely believe Jamal Bowman. 100%. As soon as you add in the piece that he was sprinting and rushing to go cast that vote, well then, Occam's razor is that he is telling the truth. Now look, I'm willing to grant people grace up front because I'm sure the original reaction for most people is the exact same reaction that I had of like, hold on, that story doesn't really add up. But then after you learn all the facts, after you see the sign, all of a sudden it's like, oh, you know what? That actually is seriously confusing. That is seriously confusing. And I don't like what other possible explanation can there be other than what he's saying? Again, the one the Republicans are going with is, well, he was trying to delay the vote. Okay, but he didn't pull the fire alarm in the main building where the vote was happening. And as soon as he got out of there, he sprinted to go cast the vote. So when you put everything together, I can't think of a more direct explanation than what he described. Now, is it still a stupid mistake? Sure. But also at the same time, let's not pretend like this sign is not incredibly confusing. And there were tweets from people who work in the building or the buildings around it who are like, yeah, you know, the alarm actually goes off all the time for similar reasons. So, look, I, I mean, the thing that I can't get out of my mind is how weaselly the right is being about this. It's like, really, this is your scandal. This is what you're going to hang your hat on. You're talking about locking somebody up over this. Meanwhile, the head of your party has 91 criminal charges and was just found liable of fraud, and it's like, mum's the word. So the scandals that they're leaning into on the right talking about Democrats is that, oh, Biden is really, really old, and Jamal Bowman pulled a fire alarm. And it's like, okay, your guy was just found liable of fraud and has 91 criminal charges and tried to literally overturn the election, and you're doing a comparison between pulling a fire alarm by accident because you're trying to get to a vote versus the people who tried to obstruct an official government proceeding with the purpose of not... Uh, of overturning the election, of not handing the keys over to Biden, even though they are legally and constitutionally required to do so, you're trying to make that comparison? It just goes to show you, man, they are feasting on false equivalents. They really are. They're trying so desperately to whip up scandals. And it's like, if this is the best you got, pfft, God bless, man.
God bless. Because after looking at the sign, after learning all the facts, I think for sure his explanation is the most straightforward explanation. And look, now watch. I guarantee you, in the in the era of terminal online brain worms, the, the most popular interpretation is going to be the Republican interpretation. Which is, no, he was trying to delay the vote, even though he was rushing to get to the vote, and all that stuff. And so... I mean, I don't know what to do about that, other than to come out here and tell the truth and let the chips fall where they may. But I guarantee you, it's almost like a law of nature at this point. Whatever is the dumbest, most conspiratorial explanation is the one that most people are going to go with, and they're just going to disregard and omit the facts that bust up their narrative. In this instance, that he wasn't in the main building, he was rushing to get to the main building to go cast the vote, and that the frickin' sign is absurd. They got to change that sign, and they got to change the way these doors work. That's obvious. But anyway, there you have it. Um, I don't know who this is more embarrassing for. Yeah, it's slightly embarrassing for Jamal Bowman. But at the same time, the arguments from the right are just so preposterous, and they're trying desperately to whip up some sort, some sort of false equivalence. They're comparing him to January Sixers. And I just hope, I think normie America is going to be able to see through that. I think regular people will be able to see through that. But unfortunately, on the online hellscape, I'm sure it's going to be quite the opposite. People will definitely go with the dumber, more conspiratorial explanation. Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.